Talk to you, Luke here. A while ago I posted a video showing how to turn an old iPhone into a car tracker. But of course there's one glaring oversight to that video and that doesn't work with Android phones. So in this video I'm going to be showing you an update of methods that works with both Android and iPhones. And we can use them cross-platform as well. Super easy to do, super quick and really, really cheap. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to show you exactly step-by-step -step how to do that in this video. Of course, if you haven't hit it already and you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that bell notification icon and subscribe button just down here to be alerted to future updates like this. So what do we need for this? Well, of course, an old iPhone or an old Android phone, and we're going to basically be using Google Maps throughout this because Google Maps is available on PCs, on Macintosh, on Android phones, and on iOS devices. In fact, it's pretty much built into every Android phone out there. The only downside of Google Maps, which I've not found they can do, is geofence alerts, because previously I used Find My Friends on iPhone, so if you want to have a look how to use that version, there's a link to the video just up here. And um, I kind of do prefer them just staying between iOS, honestly, to stay with Find My Friends, but Google Maps is a very, very good alternative, and of course it's got a cross-platform compatibility and interaction which Find My Friends unfortunately doesn't have. In addition to your old phone, you're going to want a pay-as-you-go data plan. Find whatever works with your phone and make sure to one-off payments. For example, O2 here do 2GB of data for £10 and the data will roll over. Pinging your device only uses a kilobyte of information to go with whatever data is cheapest. And then head over to Amazon and get yourself a 12 volt USB plug to charge the phone with and a piggyback fuse. Links are in the description below, and I'll talk more on this after we've set the phone up. The first thing you want to do is head over to Google and create a new account. Then, if it's not already installed, you need to head over to the Android Play Store or the iOS App Store and download Google Maps on both of your devices. Then on the tracker phone, launch Google Maps and click on the menu icon at the top left of the screen. Please note I'm using an Android phone as a tracker here and the steps may vary slightly if you're using an iPhone. Then click the downwards facing arrow and click add account. Here you want to log in with the new account that you just created. Agree to the terms and conditions and enable location history. Once logged in, open the menu and click on location sharing and then get started. You want to click the option that allows you to share your real-time location until you turn it off. Then click select people and enter your normal Google account at the top. Then share and if you get an option asking you to turn on location sharing, go ahead and allow it. A notification should pop up on your main phone saying that your new account is sharing to location with you. As a side note, make sure you're logged in with your normal Google account on your main phone. Just navigate to the location sharing on your main phone to see where your car is now located. Also, which is really cool, you can go to maps.google.com on a computer and log in with your account to view where your car is as well. And one final thing worth doing is making sure that your tracker phone is completely on silent with vibrate turned off and the background app refresh is disabled except for Google Maps. Firstly we want to start by locating the car's fuse holder. Then we want to determine which one of these fuses we can remove. We're looking for permanent live. So check out my video in the link at the top which is going to show you how to find a permanent live or ignition live. So my car here I'm going to remove this fuse. And here we're going to take a piggyback fuse holder. Now what these do is they go into the normal fuse on the car but they give you two outputs instead so we can actually take two separate feeds off one fuse block. Now what I've done here, I've took the wire out of the kit um, and I've just soldered it to the piggyback fuse holder to make a more secure connection. You can crimp these, you can use bullet connectors if you want, whatever suits you. Now what I want to point out is there is a certain way around that these fuses go. Now, the kit comes with a 10 amp fuse, so what you want to do is the feed you're wiring up needs to be in line with the wire coming off the fuse block. So in other words, the original fuse 
goes where there's no wire coming out the side. And where there's a wire coming out the side, that's where your aftermarket fuse would go, so to speak. So in this case, where we're using two different amperages, our five amp will go at the top without a wire, and our 10 amp will go at the bottom. Then it's a case of taking our piggyback fuse holder and sticking it in the slot where the old fuse was. And that's all live wired up. Now we just need to earth it and then we can connect it up to the USB block. In order to earth this, we need to find a bare metal point on the car. Now the lives have to come out of specific parts on the fuse box, but the entire body of the car is a negative earth point. So we can just tap into that and it complete the circuit. Now conveniently on my car, Audi have just stuck a random screw in here to design for that type of purpose. You may have to look a bit further underneath the dash or maybe in the door jam at the side, but make sure when I say bare metal, that's not painted surface. So undo the screw. Now I know this looks painted, but when we take it out, you can actually see it's bare metal further in on this, so it's absolutely fine on this car. Then we're going to take the ring end of our kit and we're going to stick the bolt straight through there, just like that. And then we're going to stick that straight back into the hole. With that done, we've got both our live and negative feeds, so we just need to connect this up now to the USB block, and then we're finished. On the back of the USB block, this one I've just wrapped with some tape to keep it, uh, stop it from rattling behind the dash, you're going to find a positive and a negative. So the positive is the red wire, and the negative is the black wire, and we just need to connect the terminals up to them. So red to the positive, black to the negative, and there we have it, power going straight to it. All we need to do then is connect a USB cable up to it, wire that behind the dash and plug into the phone and you're good to go. And that's everything from me everyone, so until next time, see you soon and take care.